Good evening. If you'd like to open your Bibles up to Acts chapter 26, we'll take a few passages from the story that is there in Acts 26, where Paul is retelling the account of his conversion before King Agrippa. We're probably all very familiar with the story how Paul, formerly known as Saul, was on his way to Damascus when he sees the Lord in heaven. And in verse 14 of Acts 26, as he's retelling the story, he says, And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew dialect, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. I want to talk about that phrase tonight. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. See, this was a, a rebuke of Saul from from heaven above, and I don't know that we necessarily understand what it means since we don't necessarily do anything with goads. But I'll tell you, a few of us were at a banquet on uh, Saturday night, and I saw an example of an animal that needed to be goaded down the aisle to where he was supposed to be. If anybody uh, saw or then heard about after the fact, the kiss the critter competition, there was a stubborn critter that didn't want to go where it was supposed to go because obviously this was a fundraiser for the Flowers family and their adoption process, and we'd voted on who we wanted to have to kiss some random critter. Well, when uh, Tom Steger brought out the, the critter, this, there's a couple pictures here. Here's Hannah and uh, Bailey Steger trying to get this critter, this goat. I didn't get too many good screenshots from the video. Trying to get this goat to go where it's supposed to go, and that goat doesn't want to go. He's resisting. So Bailey's having to shove it from behind and Haley's ha or Hannah's having to pull it from the front even when it gets there. And this may have been the reason why. <laughs> Jesse's a pretty handsome man, but he's not a very attractive goat. <laughs> so the goat didn't, didn't want to go. So they're having to hold it there in place, right? And it's because of the stubbornness of that goat. So they're having to use a form of goading, not goating, but goading to make that animal go because the animal is stubborn. Now, an actual goad uh, that Paul's probably referring to is this kind of device here, which is a sharp, pointy object to poke the animal and make it go where you want it to go. Uh, because you want it to pull that plow. You've got some work you want it to do, and a lot of times those animals are just stubborn. They don't want to do it. And so sometimes the animals are so stubborn, they're even kicking back against those pointy spikes. And think that feels very good? Makes it worse. Just makes matters worse for the animal. And so Jesus uses that analogy to try to persuade Saul to stop kicking against the goats. It hurts. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. So stop. Think about what was goading Saul. So Saul should become a Christian, right? That's what the context is all about. Jesus is appearing to this Jew who's persecuting Christians when he should actually just become a Christian. He's fighting against uh, everything that's pushing him toward becoming a Christian. Notice some of the things that he mentions. If they're on his mind here, they were probably on his mind even back then. Notice in verse 8, when he's talking to Agrippa, he says, Why is it considered incredible among you people if God does raise the dead? So as a non-Christian, before he's become a Christian, he knows that there's this story out there that Jesus died on the cross. Everybody knew that he died on the cross, but the story goes that he actually rose from the dead. And he's fighting that idea. But this must have been goading him. Well, why am I fighting that idea? God can raise the dead, can he not? And we sure can't find this man's body. The story of the resurrection uh, seems like a fairly credible story. He perhaps did rise from the dead. But then notice what else may have been goading in verse 10. He says, and, and this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Sorry, backing up to verse 9. So then I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Not only did I lock up many of the saints in prisons 
having received authority from the chief priests, but also when they were being put to death, I cast my vote against them. Do you think Saul's sins were starting to affect his conscience? When he stood there and watched a righteous man die at the stoning of Stephen, holding the coats for those who were throwing the stones, as he says here, casting his vote against these men, do you think those sins were starting to pile up in guilt in his mind? that maybe he's doing something wrong? That was another one of the goads. Change, Saul. Do, some, do, do what's right. These are righteous men who are believing something that is true. But notice another thing he mentions in verses 22 through 23. He says, So having obtained help from God, I stand to this day testifying both to small and great, stating nothing but what the prophets and Moses said was going to take place that the Christ was to suffer, and that by reason of his resurrection from the dead, he would be the first to proclaim light both to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. You know, Saul knew the scriptures. And knowing what the prophets had said, just like we've been studying on Sunday morning, knowing what Psalm 22 said about how the Christ would suffer on a cross with his hands and his feet pierced, Hearing these things about, did you realize that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, was actually born in Bethlehem? You know, these, these little details, probably as he's hearing these things from others. Oh, you know, that, that's Micah 5. It says that he'd be born in Bethlehem. All these things are actually coincidentally true about this man that I'm persecuting. Those facts of the Old Testament must have been goading him toward belief. But he was kicking against it, resisting. Ask yourself this, this evening, what is it that's goading you to become a Christian? If you're not a Christian, are there, are there things goading you? You know, I think the first thing we probably think of, and I thought this may be appropriate, Thanksgiving time, you're getting together with family, and you may think, boy, mom and dad are always on my case, you know. Maybe they, they're wishing I would become a Christian. Oh, and I'm going to have to see grandma this weekend. She sure wishes that I would become a Christian aunts, uncles, and you may feel those goads. Those are good. Those are good things to encourage others to become a Christian. But those weren't the things that were goading Saul. And we have the same things that were goading Saul, goading us. We have our sins that we'd really like to have forgiven, just like those things that he had done wrong in persecuting the saints. Those things should be weighing heavily on our conscience until we become a Christian, because we know the only way to become a Christian is, or the only way to have those sins forgiven is through Christ. We have the scriptures that tell us that Jesus was the Christ, and we have the resurrection from the dead, where it's an indisputable fact that that tomb was empty. Even his enemies confirmed it, that that tomb was empty. The Son of God rose from the dead. And so if you have faith, if you have belief, yeah, I think Jesus really did live die and raise from the dead three days later, then why aren't you a Christian? You should become a Christian. Is it harder, ask yourself this final question, is it harder for you to continue to kick and resist or is it easier to just simply obey the truth? I think if you ask anybody who has become a Christian, they'll tell you they don't regret it. They're relieved, really that they finally did what they always knew they should do as soon as they had start, started to believe. If you continue in that stubbornness, you're like the ox who's kicking against the goads, just making his own life more and more difficult. So if you know what you need to do, and you know these facts about Jesus and believe them, then stop kicking against the goads. Just start tonight by obeying him in simple trusting faith. Repent of your sins. Confess what you believe, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and become a Christian by being baptized into Christ and having those sins washed away. If you're in Christ, you can also come at this time and ask the Lord to forgive you and ask for our prayers, which we'd happily join into with you to see you restored to a faithful walk before God. Whatever your need is tonight, we invite you to come while we stand and sing.